Hello, hello, everybody. Is this? Yeah, this thing works. All right, cool. The slides are up. All right, uh, let's talk about serverless decentralized Web3 backends with Gelato. Who here knows uh, Gelato? Hands up, please. Anybody? Yeah, a couple, couple of folks. All right, cool. So the agenda for this talk is first, I will talk about backend architecture of Web3 apps today. And then I will talk about how to decentralize your DApps backend using Gelato Automate, Gelato Relay, and serverless Web3 functions. So let's talk about backend architecture of uh, Web3 apps today. Uh, most developers starting out in the space uh, sort of have this hopes and dreams that they never have to touch backends again, they never have to do DevOps again, they just have to build smart contracts and connect them to their front end, to their dev UI, and that's it. And it, it's true in some sense, smart contracts can, be, uh, can uh, do backend things, uh, but it's definitely not enough. The problem is that smart contracts alone as backends are not powerful enough. Smart contracts cannot self-execute their business logic. They always require an external entity to send a transaction to them, to call a function, to post data. All these things a smart contract always needs an external entity for. A user sending a transaction, a bot sending a transaction, whatever, an oracle sending a transaction, Gelato Relayer sending a transaction, uh, it's always the same. And also blockchains are pretty isolated. They cannot really talk to the outside world. So. Conventional tech backends, you know, they have uh, access to a rich uh, lake of data from Web2 APIs all over the place. Smart contracts don't. They can talk to everything on-chain, uh, but that's pretty much it. And there's a lot of cool stuff on-chain, but there's a lot more cool stuff off-chain. So, yeah, that's a problem. Web3 user experience, onboarding experience in general also needs help, usually from backends, uh, to surface rich data. And in general, smart contracts as a backend is, like, not a good idea alone because they're like compared to modern databases they you know they can't do SQL they can't do GraphQL yeah you can build stuff on top like subgraphs and so on that do all of these things but smart contracts alone can't do them so yeah um, that's why actually um, what ends up happening as you grow your smart contract uh, sort of uh, app uh, you start building these backend components and as your project grows and so on these become more and more and eventually Actually, your project looks now like a Web2 project again. Like you have this huge backend, these huge servers with AWS. You have your microservices, your, your RabbitMQ. You do blockchain indexing. You maybe, if you want to send transactions, have to store private keys in the cloud. Have to make sure that's secure. Um, yeah, and if you see yourself successful enough, you will also see yourself become the villain here because eventually you'll just turn into a Google or whatever, right? So, so that's clearly a problem because we need these backends. Web2 technology is good, it's there for a reason, but it has to be decentralized as well. Uh, a simple example from one of our spin-up projects, Arrakis Finance. This uh, does automated liquidity management, uh, decentralized market making on a Uniswap V3. So it basically rebalances token liquidity around the price on Uniswap V3 for con concentrated liquidity management. And it has these smart contracts that are super cool, has a front end, but in the back end there's so much stuff happening, like there's off-chain data and compute, price data being fetched, volatility data, volume data, uh, you know, data on when to rebalance liquidity. You have all these in indices of token prices, APRs, uh, not just for the back end, but also for the UI, for analytics. Uh, and then you have automation, right? Like you need to automatically rebalance uh, the pool. That's the whole point of, of Arrakis using Gelato, for example. Um, uh, yeah, so, so the, the problem here is that uh, basically, I mean, first of all, it's a problem because you need to manage and scale all of these server resources, right? So uh, that's very costly, very time consuming. Uh, you have to manage the quirks of blockchain, so you have to deal with different RPCs on different networks, all with varying degrees of stability. They can go down, they can throttle you, all of these things, you have to handle that. Trust me, it's quite complex. Then you need to pay all these RPC providers or run the nodes yourself everywhere in a scalable manner, supporting, I don't know, hopefully thousands of users. Then when you expand to a new network, you have to replicate everything for every network and you have to deal with the quirks of every network again. If you need to send transactions, you have to store private keys, you have to top them up, you have to make sure it's secure. And 
say, even if you are like a 10x engineer and you do that, all of that is easy for you, you still haven't really achieved anything because you'll just become the centralized point of failure of your own decentralized application. So if your uh, application needs like a big backend, which most useful applications simply do, um, then it's not a good idea if you're the only one running this backend because guess what? If your backend is down, your application malfunctions. Uh, we lose all of the nice availability prop properties of Ethereum and so on. So yeah, you don't want to do that. So how to decentralize your backend using Gelato? First of all, what is Gelato? Um, Gelato is Web3's decentralized backend. We are empowering builders to augment their smart contracts to create reliable, user-friendly, scalable Web3 apps without, and that's important, without sacrificing decentralization or censorship resistance. Although everything is always on a spectrum, right? So uh, we're definitely not perfect yet, yet there, and we want to get better every day. So uh, basically, you see the stack here as before. You have your front end, you have your smart contracts, and now you have what we call serverless Web3. So basically, all of your backend things that I mentioned earlier, like transaction automation, smart contract automation, relaying of gasless transactions, uh, Web3 functions, so connecting off-chain data with on-chain data, all of this can be, you write the logic, you write the rules, the business logic, but you deploy it on Gelato network, a decentralized network of nodes that are hosting this code for you and that are running this code for you. And for data storage, we're also experimenting with decentralized tech, so we do offer IPFS, I also personally would love to look into Arweave, uh, but we also have sort of modern uh, SQL databases and so on that you can access in this backend. You can think of this as sort of like an AWS Lambda, but on Web3 Rails. So how does Gelato work? Um, basically, uh, you write your code and you write, you know, what data is to be processed, what data is to be validated, what, when it should be sent on chain to automate or to do whatever. And uh, this validation logic is run in a decentralized network. Uh, we're soon also adding consensus mechanisms to have more security there. And then once your code says, hey, please take this data and execute it, please take this data and call my smart contract, put data on chain, whatever, it's dispatched to a decentralized network of executors, we call them, that are basically very specialized client software we wrote that is extremely performant and getting thousands of transactions pushed to many different chains in, in minutes. Uh, and from there, we're entering the on-chain entry point of the Gelato protocol. Gelato protocol is just a set of smart contracts that basically, you can think of it as SLAs, like service level agreements that make sure that this Gelato network of bots fulfills the conditions of the application uh, that you are building. And then from there, we go to your target contract. For example, PancakeSwap uses us or, or MakerDAO. And uh, we call the function that you need to be called. We post the data that you want to be posted, and, and that's it. So let's dive a bit deeper into Automate. Uh, that's the OG Gelato thing that we uh, sort of invented back in 2019, a, a smart contract automation protocol. And it's really an end-to-end -end automation service that basically lets you define on-chain conditions that should trigger transactions to certain smart contracts. And Gelato will then execute your function with the data and at, at the time that, that, uh, that you want. There's also a nice monitoring alerting system to alert you about executions and everything. And a very, I think, to be honest, uh, best in the industry, easy to use interface, where it's like technically you can go completely without code. You just paste your smart contract address, the ABI, and you can start automating functions with a click of a mouse button. Yeah, so there's a lot of use cases that have used this over the last two years. Uh, for example, in the yield farming section, we have Beefy Finance, Harvest, uh, all of these guys that have used this for automatically uh, harvesting uh, vaults. Um, prediction markets have used this. Uh, there's a whole sort of weird corner of the internet that uses Gelato for rebasing algo stablecoins. Ohm, for example, did that. Uh, then automated node top-ups there, like Optimism uses us, Maker uses us. Uh, for uh, NFT lending, Zrun uses the, the automation, and Superfluid as well does it for automated money management. Yeah, so by now there's uh, more than 300 projects using this stuff and over 2 million automated transactions, and uh, Gelato has uh, uh, established itself as the number one automation service in Web3. 
Um, yeah, let's talk about Relay. That's what we built after we built the automation. And that's, uh, um, I mean, you can think of it very simply as a very scalable transaction execution engine. So for example, cross-chain bridges like Connext uh, uses this to send thousands of transactions, tens, tens of thousands of transactions per day. Uh, and as a developer, it's like a simple to use SDK and API like, like you would use in a normal Web2 backend. And you don't have to worry and deal with all of the nastiness of transaction lifecycle management like nonces, reorgs, all of these things are abstracted away from you. You just send what you want to send on chain and Gelato does it for you in, in that timely and reliable manner. It also enables something called account abstraction with any smart contract wallet. And uh, you, you might know gasless transactions, so transactions where you don't have to pay for the gas. That's also uh, built with Gelato Relay. Uh, we have a gasless wallet SDK for that. Um, I will talk a bit about that later, and I also have a workshop on that at 5 p.m. today. Bonus slides. Yay. Account abstraction. Uh, it's, it's just clickbait, to be honest. Uh, had to put it in the, in the talk, but come to my workshop there. I will show you a bit about uh, Gelato and account abstraction. But for now, I won't dwell on this. All right. Last but not least, our most recent release out of the Gelato um, industry is the Web3 uh, Web functions, what we call decentralized cloud functions. Uh, we experimented with that last year and released it uh, last year. And basically, that's uh, taking Gelato to its next step by not just relying on on-chain data, but also connecting your decentralized application with the world of off-chain APIs, anything really that you want to find on the internet. You can use it, process it, and post it in your smart contracts. So uh, yeah, let's talk about Web3 functions. Um, Web3 functions are decentralized cloud functions that enable developers to connect their smart contracts to off-chain data. It ensures in the network that the data is accurate. You can write these things we call validators or verifiers that sort of define your custom logic for data validation. And uh, you can run off-chain computation and execute transactions from inside your Web3 functions on many blockchains. So again, it's somewhat like AWS Lambda, but it comes with so many cool off-the-shelf things like easy transaction execution, easy multi-chain data fetching, all of these things. Uh, in like this much code, so it's really great. Uh, you can send notifications um, uh, to monitor your application and then index and store data. So I, I could totally see people dumping a lot of data from APIs or, or from the blockchain into a GraphQL database or something for dashboarding, analytics, all of these things. You have like literally it's general stuff, so you can completely customary define what you want to wanna do with it. Um, Web3 functions work like so. Uh, you just have to write your Web3 function, which is a TypeScript file, deploy it to IPFS, and from there, Gelato nodes will index it, pick it up, and run it for you. And inside your file, you can call any arbitrary Web2 API, HTTP APIs, everything. And you can also easily send transactions on chain with data from these APIs, again, routing them via the Gelato protocol to your target contract and doing whatever you want with that. So some of the key features are its TypeScript support with a sandbox Dino runtime. Uh, there's really great RPC provider abstractions we provide that make you know, all these sort of blockchain data fetching and transaction sending across chain insanely easy. You get access to secrets, so you can have secret API keys on there. Uh, it stores uh, securely. Uh, you can have private uh, Web3 function code or public ones in-function state management, which basically means you get access to persistence in there, like you can access a Redis DB, do all sorts of things. You can dump data into a, a SQL database. Uh, yeah, it has a very flexible paper usage pricing, also scaling all of this stuff that you know from the public cloud. High scalability, and one of the cool quirks uh, is you can actually spawn your Web3 function runner from your smart contract. Like, you can emit a smart contract event, and that thing will pick it up and do something and you know, call back into the smart contract or whatever you want to do with it. So this is truly, truly this coupling, this marrying of Web 2 with Web 3, combining the two. Yeah, here's some code. Don't worry, it's not that much. Uh, yeah, we got the Web 3 functions SDK. Uh, and it's really just this Web 3 function runner. And this thing is called. Um, 
you can configure how, how and when it's called. It can be event-based. And here in this example, we simply fetch data from a public sports data provider, and we want to post the result of a football game on chain. I don't know, maybe for a betting dep or something, right? Prediction market. Um, yeah, so typical TypeScript, you just fetch the data from the API, uh, you instantiate the contract, you, you serialize the payload for the smart contract call, and off you go. You just return your object, you say it can be executed, and now your Web3 function will use the Gelato network to post the data uh, to your smart contract. That's it, basically. So it's super easy to get started. And you don't have to run any servers yourself. You don't have to hire people to be 24-7 on pager duty. Gelato does this for you. Yeah, so use cases, uh, dynamic, dynamic NFTs that change based on off-chain data. Actually, we, uh, you might have seen on Twitter, we have a free mint ETH Dubai NFT. I will share the link later in this presentation. And later in my workshop, I will also show you how the UI and the minting and everything works. Uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Uh, you can leverage DEX aggreg aggregators uh, for automated token swaps. So you can talk to the OneInch API, for example, Paraswap APIs. Uh, that's usually super useful uh, to, I don't know, uh, for example, a lot of yield protocols first always integrated with Uniswap when they did uh, rebalances uh, because they didn't have access uh, in automation to off-chain data, but now they can use OneInch, for example, instead of Uniswap to uh, have more efficient swaps, automated swaps in the yield farming protocol. You can leverage bridge aggregators like uh, LeFi. Uh, again, any API really you can use uh, to automate your smart contracts on or do what, whatever you, would, uh, you want with it. Resolve real-world events like sports. You can use ChatGPT and post stuff on Lens. We did that already with CoroDAO. Uh, and yeah, you can do multi-chain NFT limit orders, whatever. Like The world is your oyster at this point. So yeah. One balance bonus lights. Uh, yeah, so... Um, a lot of pain usually when you want to maintain an application, especially when it's multi-chain, is paying for the gas, making sure that you have the right currencies at all times, like you, your ETH is depleting quickly, you want to top it up, you have to bridge it over from your company wallet, blah, 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 horrible stuff. We built this one balance system, which is a multi-chain payment system. We released it last year. And very simply, you just deposit USDC on Polygon, for example, and now your USDC can be used to pay for all of your applications, transactions on all the chains. So you can top up USDC and, you know, Gelato Relay will execute transactions for you on Ethereum, on Polygon, your Web3 functions, all of this is paid for from a single balance, no matter what you do want to do across all of the chains. So that's really removing a lot of friction for developers. And you can also use the same system to pay for your Gelato API usage, service users, all of it. So literally the goal here is to have one balance, one token, there will be more options, but for now it's USDC on Polygon. And that's it. From there you can pay for transactions, services, everything. So yeah, our mission is to get as close as possible to Ethereum security. Uh, for that we will launch the gel staking and slashing soon. Most likely next month already. And uh, yeah, that's basically normal stuff, right? That we have a bunch of node operators in the network. We're adding more as we speak. It's still permissioned at this stage, but eventually it will be permissionless, and you can just join the network by staking the minimum stake. Uh, and yeah, that's launching soon. Uh, we also want to have further security and decentralization in the network by, uh, we're already talking to the guys from Eigenlayer to basically get more restaking, to get more stake on Gelato Network as well, to, to have more skin in the game for these node operators. And last but not least, uh, we're also researching zero knowledge proofs at the moment for our Web3 functions so that eventually we can also have uh, basically verified compute outputs um, uh, yeah, that should also make it easy to agree on data that was generated off-chain and verified on-chain. Uh, yeah, that's the, the ecosystem uh, that Gelato has. Uh, as you might know, we've been live for almost three years and since then, uh, yeah, we have, been de we have deployed to basically every EVM chain and we have been used by many, many projects uh, in the aggregator system. For example, Instadep uh, started using Gelato already two years ago. Um, if you've been on PancakeSwap or QuickSwap or SpookySwap, they're all using Gelato for limit orders. Um, 
yeah, uh, Zedrun uses automation, Synthetics uses Gelato automation, uh, Beefy Finance, Yarn Finance, all these guys have used Gelato automation. Connex uses uh, Layer Zero and, and Multichain have all used Gelato automation and, and Connex relaying as well. Um, Maker has used it. Uh, yeah, you know, we have to update this chart quite a lot usually, uh, but that should be pretty up to date. So this stuff is production ready, it's battle tested, uh, so you can go, you know, to production immediately and, and don't have to worry about downtime or something like that. Yeah, make sure to join my workshop later on. It's about account abstraction and Web3 functions, and I will show you how to gaslessly mint an AI-generated ETH Dubai NFT. It's a lot of buzzwords. And it's at 5 p.m. in track five, which is upstairs. It's a bit hard to find. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's up the revolving stairs there at 5 p.m. and you'll get an AI JPEG. Uh, yeah, again, the agenda for the workshop is minting a dynamic NFT. Uh, it will use account abstraction, Web3 auth and so on, so it, it's like a crazy cool user experience. You just have to sign in with your social or MetaMask, click two buttons, and you get your NFT, and the NFT is then using a Web3 function in the background that talks to OpenAI, DALI, and uh, basically updates the metadata for the NFT to post an AI-generated image. So all of this, I'll show you the code, how it's done, uh, and it's surprisingly little code, actually. Yeah, um, most importantly, make sure to build on Gelato. If you're a developer, visit Gelato Network slash developers. Join our Discord over here is the QR code. And uh, yeah, I'm good pusher. Although, sadly, I don't push that much good these days anymore. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for coming. And now, if you guys want to, you can already mint your NFT here. Just go to this ETH slash Dubai slash NFT dot web dot app. That's the NFT that I got AI generated. Uh, and it's a free mint. It's gasless. You don't have to pay anything. And you get your NFT. Although. We hacked this together yesterday, and it's not optimized, and we are throttling the AI, so uh, the, the uh, AI calls, uh, the API calls, and it's pretty slow. If a lot of people mint at the same time, you might have to wait like 10 or 15 minutes for your image to show up on OpenSea. And OpenSea is also a bit buggy there, but, but yeah. Anyways, just do it anyway. Cool. So, yeah, that's it. So be gentle. Sorry? <laughs> be gentle. You say they can't, uh, if too many people try to mint at uh, the same no, time? Just go, go for it, but you might have to wait go a little. Go for it. It'll, it'll, show, it'll show the Gelato logo and then reveal soon, and then in the back end it will be the Web3 function okay. that talks to OpenAI and, and gets an image generated and then posts this on-chain into the NFT smart contract. Yeah. So we have up to like 10 minutes for questions. Uh, I, there's got to be a lot of questions about the Gelato network. Uh, if you want to raise your hand... We'll leave this slide up too, but uh, raise your hand if you have any questions for Lewis, and I'll come around and let you use the microphone. Anyone? All right. So, is there a free tier of the service where developers could try out ideas on Gelato before paying? Uh, yeah, I mean, normally we try to always have a free tier. Uh, a free tier. Um, uh, so just uh, come to our Discord, our Telegram, let us know what you want to do, whether it's Automate or, or something like that. By the way, we're all on test nets as well. So we, we are on Gurley, Mumbai, all these test nets. On some of them, like Web3 Functions, for example, we pay for all of your test net transactions also on Gurley. Literally had to buy some Gurley with ETH recently to do that. So, so yeah, um, you should be able to get started without paying anything. So there's no cost for a developer to go and start playing around with uh, the test net. Uh, deploying an app to test nets on Gelato, right? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. There's no major cost for a developer to, to start deploying their apps on the test net on Gelato. No, uh, yeah, all the infrastructure is already deployed, right? That's the whole point. You don't have to write or deploy any infrastructure. Uh, you just have to deploy your smart contract. So, yeah, that, that's the only cost you have other than your hours that you're you know, coding this up. But nice. that's it. We have a question over here. Yeah, hi. It's Ilya from Plasma. So uh, for me, um, your product is, looks more like a B2B now, like for, from developers to developers, right? Just to optimize some contract interaction. 
So what do you think about the market like B2C when the users can use the gelato to optimize any like abstractions or processes that they do usually? Like, you know, the DeFi saver optimize some of the DeFi processes. What do you think about going gelato to this market and build some more nice UI and UX for the end user? So uh, it's a very good question. And gelato indeed is what I call like business to developer. Um, um, and yeah, so we, we have, you know, sometimes we've done things on the user interface level as well. Like we did work with Ava two years ago and we had this automated health ma factor management. So Ava users were able, together with Gelato on a UI, uh, um, configure an automation where the health factor would automatically be uh, pushed up again by reusing the collateral and so on. Uh, but we actually decommissioned that um, and, and uh, we, we had at some point a UI for this automated liquidity management on Uniswap and suddenly there was like one billion TVL in there and we were like, what the fuck, like this is not infrastructure. So we spun it out into a separate project where there's people taking care of that now. In general, like I think what DeFi Saver and so on do is amazing, cool automation. I'm not that interested in going to the end user level yet at least. Uh, I'm more interested in backend technologies and so on. There's a lot to do there still. So, so yeah, probably not, uh, not anytime soon. All right, another question back here. Unless you had a follow-up. <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, I just wanted to understand that uh, what will be the advantages in terms of uh, speed and price uh, uh, of using Gelato as compared to just using a cron job that is querying the chain data and doing so, the backup. Sorry, I, I don't understand uh, that, that. I think there's like a bad echo or something in the room. Can you maybe repeat the question? Yeah, uh, am I audible now? Like, can you understand? Sli slightly, yeah, but let's, let's go, let's go. Uh, I'm just asking what will be the advantages in terms of speed and price precisely of using Gelato as compared to, let's say I have a cron job that is querying the on-chain data and just uh, giving okay. the events or like doing whatever backend work I want basically. Your question is uh, basically you're a backend developer, you can just write your own cron jobs and so on. Exactly. So why would you use Gelato, right? Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, I had a couple of slides of, on that in the beginning, but basically, I mean, f first of all, uh, so that you sleep better at night, right? Uh, what if your cron job goes down or whatever? What if your server goes down? You have to be woken up by pager duty and fix it. So that's a no-brainer. Like, you don't have to do that anymore. Uh, and then most importantly, really, it's if you are building like a serious Web3 application, you want it to be decentralized, you don't want to be the single point of failure of that, right? So Gelato is a network of nodes. It's not just us running these nodes. We also have staking facilities, many other node operators uh, that are joining the network, running these nodes. So even if Gelato, the company, shuts business in five years or so, there'll still be others to service the network, and your application will never have downtime, right? That's, that's the, the, the idea. Uh, cool. Just a quick follow-up on that. So as you said, like, let's say if my cron or like whatever job I have on Gelato gets skipped, so you're saying that the other nodes that are having the job, they will uh, be able to verify that a job got skipped and they'll do it automatically. That's why I won't be needed on pager duty or anything like that. I'm sorry, mates. The acoustics are so bad, I, I can't understand any of that. It's too much echo. Yeah, so if the cron job doesn't get skipped I mean, on Gelato, it's because the other nodes can verify. Sorry? Verify what? The, that the job got skipped. That or the job happened. I just connected with him after the call. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't get that. I'll, I'll have him come up and talk to you afterwards. Uh, yeah. No worries. Do we have any other questions in the room? And by the way, guys, if you have questions, yeah. I'm going to be there at the entrance. Uh, feel free to talk to me. I, I'm happy to answer more questions there. I'll, I'll let him come down now. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll save you from this. But uh, yeah, everyone, uh, come see Lewis. Ask him questions. Gelato's amazing. I'm interested in the databases. And thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah.